We realized right from the start that we would want to review the quality of courses as they went along. And so we started out looking at models that were out there. We had a number of people trained in Quality Matters and we did a few course reviews for a few years that way. And then when Oscar came along, it just, um, it fit our online philosophy of teaching much better. So we adopted that right away. But it, the review process in general is written into our distance learning policy. So um, people who come to teach online are trained and they know they sign an agreement that they will have their course reviewed. We might use something like Oscar or we might use something like Quality Matters, depending upon the particular time in the history of, of the program. But I think that's a model that works where we, where we tie the, the review process to the other academic goals the program has. So it's not just about interaction, um, number of contacts, those kinds of things. It's about what model of online learning do we want to do in the particular program that we have. It might be different for a master's in liberal studies versus an MBA program. Even though there are existing rubrics that I think are incredibly helpful, um, I'm also really, I encourage my faculty, uh, my fellow faculty, to find new ways to assess their own work, not just student work, using measures that, even if it's not numeric or qual uh, quantitative, that they can still sort of look at the spectrum and, uh, and make decisions about how they're going to make changes to their class, how they're going to be more successful, how they're going to have more successful students based on some um, solid data, and sometimes you need a rubric to assess that. I was um, trained and certified in Quality Matters Review to um, review, review new courses by fellow faculty. It was a lot of fun. It was very, um, it was exciting to apply such a clear criteria in terms of course design. I had never really had that level of detail before in terms of um, sort of pedagogy, but also um, also sort of student-centered um, criteria in terms of uh, looking at all your course materials and your classwork from, from a student perspective. Um, so trying to understand what's happening in a classroom and then later online um, from really coming at it directly from the student perspective. You know, for instance, so, you know, is this, do these things, are they clearly related? And, you know, I as the instructor think that the scaffolding is clear that, you know, the thing we did last week directly connects to the thing we're doing this week. Um, but when you're working in an online course, you really have to make sure that those, those connections are super clear and that a student without um, necessarily face-to-face -face contact can see those connections and that they're meaningful um, and authentic. Texas Tech uh, K-12's program has started to utilize the, the SUNY Oscar rubric to do our course reviews. Um, and uh, as we were looking at our courses, we, we realized we needed uh, to do a review. We needed to do something that was established uh, a third-party review process. Um, we had um, utilized other rubrics. We had an institutionally developed one, uh, but we really wanted uh, something that was out there with some research behind it um, and that, that was uh, starting to be widely used. We really liked the fact that we didn't want them to score a hundred or the idea that you don't have to score a hundred right out of the, the gate. Quality Matters in their rubric, their course improvement process talks about that as well. Um, let's just set up a plan and, and look at incremental changes and incremental improvements. Do a little bit this semester, a little bit next semester. We've uh, started with, with English classes and, and a couple of our math classes and we've done this, uh, this review. Um, we've gotten reports back and able to make updates and changes on the, in the class. Um, it's also allowing us to see uh, where there might be a hole, um, you know, where uh, maybe we don't have enough inter interaction or, or maybe a, a piece of technology or, or instructional video has gotten through that's not fully accessible. Um, and so it's, it's given us the opportunity to look at some courses um, in, in a way that hasn't been done in the past. Right now what we're doing is we're looking at our training for our faculty. Uh, we had a list of 100 benchmarks for our best practices um, and then we're looking at that, that seems to be an onerous job. And so uh, the, we were brought to the Oscar rubric, um, particularly through the um, Online Learning Consortium. So we saw that there's a nice affiliation there and that it's an interactive tool. 
um, and really looking at each one of the benchmarks. They're, I think, easily achievable with the proper guidance, um, and I think much more manageable for faculty. Using Oscars really provided a lot of structure for us. Um, we base our whole course, the Teaching Online Certification Program, on the Oscar rubric. So in each of our modules, these are the um, standards that are addressed. And we also relate it to our, we have a syllabus template. So we relate it to that too, like, oh, you're going to be learning about course learning outcomes. Here is where you do this in your syllabus, so that after they go through our entire course, they should be done with the syllabus and they should have, if they f are following along, should have all of the essential criteria met. So we've just made a concerted effort to adopt those and to integrate some of those benchmarks within a branded development shell. Um, so that really seven of those benchmarks are already done with faculty and really meeting those best practices, such as um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, embedding uh, course policies, uh, college policies, and so on and so forth. The other thing, though, that it did bring forward to us is that we have some work to do on our end, which, which was very interesting. Uh, so there was one so for technology tools. There were two or three benchmarks in Oscar that we haven't given the proper attention to. So this, this again, uh, as we move towards continuous quality improvement was really a benefit um, to us. I like the interactive nature of the Oscar rubric. Um, if the faculty needs some help, uh, they can click on that button and it really gives very succinct, succinct um, you know, guidelines for them. And I, and I think that that would be uh, particularly valuable. We had a number of people already in the process before it dawned on us that it would be best if we use the Oscar standards when we had them developing their courses for the first time. So that's what we do now. But it, there were probably 15 or 20 faculty already teaching online that didn't do that when they first developed their courses. So we have kind of a two-tier thing going on. We review new courses as they're being developed and we keep the standards in mind with the, with the faculty member. And then um, at the same time we've gone back to the mature classes and we're reviewing those as we go along. The other thing, uh, other way we're using the Oscar rubric now is uh, in our department chairperson's approval. So uh, right now the department chairperson uh, uh, signifies yes that the course exists, but we want to start to look um, at developing trained eyes. And so I have um, taken 10 benchmarks from the Oscar rubric and developed a check form. Has it been met? not met or not applicable. And this will be vetted through our Dean's Council and hopefully this will be a useful tool um, for, uh, for our department chairpersons to also understand some of the best practices in online learning as well. When we give it back to them with the OSCAR review and the face-to-face -face, um, meeting, we have all those suggestions. One of the things I love about OSCAR is you can, you can say to them, this will only take you a half an hour to fix everything in the course that needs to be addressed for that uh, standard. And then the, the, um, the ones that take longer, we offer assistance. It's like, yes, this says it's going to take you two hours to fix, but come and see us. We'll help you with it. We've got tools for you. We've got suggestions on how to do that. So we um, try to make it as pleasant as possible to make the course better, and um, the idea that we have evidence-based backup for what we're saying is really important, because teachers will, they, they do pay attention to that. It's like, oh, there was a study that showed that? Oh, okay, that's, that's good to know. I think the biggest thing as we look at Quality Matters is um, the alignment. A lot of people have a lot of problems with the alignment. Because sometimes when you start looking at, do my assignments align with the program level? So we have program level outcomes, then we have course level outcomes, and then if you have a chapter or you have a module, then you have module level outcomes. So do your assignments and your tests and your activities all line up going to program level outcomes? And I think that, that faculty have the hardest time with that. And I say that from experience because I, I threw myself into the gauntlet of I want my course to be 
Quality Matters certified. And so that was, that was a challenge for me to get my courses lined up. And then you have to be willing to give up assignments that don't make sense. And so I was able to throw out probably maybe 20% of the assignments that I had that were great assignments, but they didn't align. You know, you, you saw it in somebody else's course. You're like, Ooh, that would be great in my course. And then you just keep adding things without seeing if it has relevance to aligning with the program level outcomes.